You know it's a good day when a Ganeto video pops up on YouTube feed, so let's see what is happening here since Empolon is gonna lead effectively a pretty nice team with Double Dragon at the back. This team is pretty safe to run, I guess that Empolon has a very nice amount of neutral matchups throughout this entire meta and you are already seeing here on my left the IVs that I am using which means that every single Empolon lead might actually be a very bad one for us because we got zero in attack and this means that we are actually gonna lose all of those CMPs. So double dragon on the back with Tertonator and the uh, Flygon but this is not a standard ABB team because still Whimsicott is gonna kind of wall down our Flygon but it will take a ton of damage while we still have access to a Pokemon like Tertonator which can easily farm down that fairy type Pokemon because of its grass typing and also I really like how Flygon can easily join the party, come into the game draw out the Azumarill so that Tertonator will be on the right track on sweeping down whatever remains on your opposing backline. I decided to come to the battle here with my Empoleon to try and suck the remaining energy that this Whimsicott is having and this cannot be anything else other than a Seed Bomb so we can easily finish them off in the process. Mobile comes in and of course all we need to do is to completely farm down with Incinerates and we are looking at a pretty solid battle to begin off today's content. So at this point I want to ask you trainers which one is your worst lead Pokemon that uh, you're gonna face in Fantasy Cup because for me I'm really challenged against the Scavengers most of the times not with this team but on every single team composition that I'm using because that Pokemon always uh, comes back at the end and absolutely destroys me down so write, the, write down in the comment section what is your opinion on this matter so with that said now we're gonna be met up with an Azumarill up in front I guess uh, no, actually, this is the switch, right? I totally missed that. Anyways, gonna keep going at it with our Empolon as we're getting the Hydro Pump. This is absolutely fine. All we need to do here is to finish off the job with our Steel Wings. Azumarill is out, and I'm not sure if that was their lead Pokemon. Anyways, now Mowal comes into the game with Hydro Can. We can easily oppose a threat to their side, and now Flygon will easily uh, come into the game. Gonna charge up to the Scorching side and then gonna throw my Dragon Claw, let's see how they react and they decide to block. This is absolutely fine since now we can easily block in return the huge play rough and now we can easily farm down. Tertonator still lies at the very end but as it seems we are not gonna need it much because Flygon is gonna get on the Scorching Suns to scorch down their shield and of course grab the victory in a very sandy way. So Flygon is one of the Pokemon that definitely deserve a Mega Form and I think it is gonna get one on uh, the next uh, Zygarde game. Anyways, now to the next one with that Excadrill up in front, one of the worst leads actually that you can get with the Steelwing and Pollon. <coughs> and uh, right here now we're having Azumarill on the Switch. Once again, we will try uh, to do our best with our Flygon and most probably if we can win this in between matchup, perhaps we can have the upper hand over that uh, uh, poor uh, Excadrill with our Tertonator. So I guess I have to go here for the Scorching Sands as my Switch Timer is coming back and I get the perfect opportunity to finish them off before anything weird happens. Right now they are switching out on that Excadrill and look at that, absolutely awesome, able to completely wall them down with our Incinerates and the Shield and I have to throw of course the Dragon Pulse because they are charging up like a crazy monster even though they are kinda short so anyways now with that uh, Azumarill returning to the game we can easily survive the move far down the process Tertonator really sees no opponent on its incinerates and of course with the overheat we can finish off even the Empoleon out of existence we're just gonna send it back to Antarctica or what, wherever this Pokemon live so anyways into the next one now with that the Dean up in front another terrible lead for us as I'm trying to catch the move on Flygon but they saw my switch coming from a mile away so they decide to overfarm and still go for the play rough. Unfortunately for us they still have Azumarill coming into the game but it's still alright because we can easily let our Flygon go down after we apply a little bit of extra pressure with one Scorching Suns while now with Empoleon we can apply even more pressure with our typing. 
Not uh, with our moves, uh, not so much, but still our typing is gonna be the key over here since we can easily farm down in the process. As Sumarill goes down, let's see how they want to react. The Dean comes into the game and now it is a perfect opportunity for us to get to a couple of Hydros. So at the very end lies an Empolon on Shadow Mode. This is terrible news for them because they take extra damage from those incinerates and I get the feeling that I can easily get the win if I go here for the Dragon Pulse. I have so much energy to spare on my Empolon. All we need to do here is to survive the charge attack and start farming down the remaining energy. However, we cannot do this and now we are in a difficult situation. I was hoping to survive but this is a Shadow Empolon after all. Hopefully though we can still finish them off so let's see if the Dean has quite what it takes to finish us down. No they do not. Empolon like the Emperor it is. It is gonna take a huge victory for our team in Fantasy Cup. Into the next game now with Empolon up in front. Okay, this is the mirror battle that I was talking about earlier in today's content. So I have zero in attack, which means that I'm gonna lose all of those CMPs. So let's see how this is gonna go since my Hydro Cannon will connect here, but on the CMP we are meeting up with another Hydro. I'm gonna take the move while I can easily go here for the Hydro to push them to no HP most probably. So they decide to block and now I aggressively switch out on my Flygon to draw out Azumarill out of my opponent's backline. So Scorching Sands here is obviously gonna be my main way to go against any fairy type Pokemon, so Azumarill is no exception. I can easily block here since I have the shield advantage and now that shields are even I can easily go for some extra pressure with my moves. Look at how low Azumarill already is, I cannot get right on time on Dragon Claw which is kind of a big bummer to be honest but it doesn't matter because in the process we can easily farm down with the mud shots and get out of here with a hundred energy stored up. And Polon returns, now we can go for the bait, now switching out on Tertonator, their own Flygon comes into the game, but guess what, the outcome has already been settled, they cannot get on the Scorching Suns and instead they are gonna get destroyed down by a simple Dragon Pulse. So down goes that uh, Flygon and since they have the return of uh, the Emperor, I'm just gonna take the move and obviously I can easily farm down with the Mud Shots because my Emperor is still alive and well and I was kind of bored in using any charge attack at all, did not want to prolong things any longer. Uh, so into the next battle with the Sandslas from the Alola region up in front. This is actually playable because they need to get on the bait to finish us off and since I know that I am expecting the bait so I am not gonna block anything, instead I will take the moves and I guess they were trying to bait till the end but this is not gonna happen. Anyways now with the Hydro Cannon we can get now on the knockout pretty easily here and my opponent not, on, not only is gonna lose the lead scenario but also the shield advantage which is pretty great. Now with the drill pack we can do some extra damage on that Azumarill before we go down however I get the feeling that Azumarill is gonna get out of here with a bunch of energy. So before they farm anymore I decide to switch out on my Flygon obviously block the first move that, the, that they're gonna throw and then get my hands on the Scorching Sands to apply a lot of pressure. This is absolutely crucial because they take the move and now they want to rely completely on their Flygon. So at this point I decide to go for that Dragon Claw and I think that I have the slight advantage on that energy gain and I decide to block at this point. Perhaps that was a mistake, perhaps we could survive at least one charge attack but it is what it is and now Dragon Claw will connect on their side and as you can see we managed to cut the move on our Empoleon, so no biggie, right? Well, yes again, because Flygon returns on the CMP, we miss it and down we go to the Dragon Claw. Now this is a race on the farm down, but hopefully they are energy dry and we can easily get a pretty close victory. Into the next game now, Empoleon once again, I'm telling you, a lot of Empoleons, a lot of Azumarils up in front, perhaps you can use something like a Magnezone to wall those Pokemon down, uh, everyone is using them, I do not know why, and guess what, I'm using Empoleon as well, so yeah, perhaps that is a hint. Anyways now, with the Tertonator coming into the game, we have access to the Scorching Suds for a little bit of extra pressure on their end. I know that most Tertonators out there will not block the first 
first move because they think it is a Dragon Claw and Tertonator can actually survive pretty easily that move, but uh, getting on the Scorching Sands will give us the immediate knockout. Anyways, now Shadow Dragonite is another Pokemon that I'm pretty much afraid of with this team because we do not have a clear answer for them. They can easily be an instant threat to my team, especially under shielding. And as it seems, they have uh, learned their lessons here because they're getting on the right track on switching out on Empoleon. However, they're gonna get punished pretty soon with a single Dragon Pulse because we get the right amount of energy and Tertonator is gonna get there in no time at all. Into the final one now and this is the absolute crazy battle that I want to reward everyone that, uh, that stayed till the end because this is absolutely insane. We have perhaps the worst lead scenario. We're meeting up with the Azumarill on the switch. Of course you might be thinking, okay Ganeto, you got this. Magnezone is a Pokemon that can easily get farmed down by Tertonator but you're gonna see in a while what I mean. So by blocking here the Ice Beam we can somehow have the upper hand. How However, I lose track of energy and my opponent is getting yet to another Ice Beam, so down I go against the Magnezone team to zero shields. So here comes now a Dragon Claw to finish them off and I guess that my opponent decides to block here, which is kind of questionable, but still it is what it is, they definitely want to maintain that very good lead. Unfortunately for us, they're gonna get now their hands on the Wild Charge, which is pretty huge for them and down I go before I get my hands on the Hydro Cannon. I was not expecting this, but it happened, and now with a couple of incinerates, we managed to farm them down. At this point, whatever they throw is resisted, so I'm not worried that much about it. I'm expecting now Azumarill to return because this Pokemon has a little bit of extra energy, and to my surprise, they have a Tapu Fini. So here is where things get tricky. My team is definitely weak on a double fairy backline, but we still managed to deliver here because now Azumarill will get farmed down by my incinerates. There is no time for them to charge up to a surf. We can easily get here to the, oh, to the second overheat. Lost my words for a second and that is gonna be a fantastic ending to today's content. Thank you for watching trainers and for sticking around till the end. It really means a lot for my channel. That final battle was crucial and absolutely awesome. Leave a huge like before you go. Subscribe to my content and I hope to see you all into the next one.